Solution for perfect problem four, uh, we get some practice with absolute value inequalities. So we're trying to solve this absolute value inequality. Uh, the basic idea when you're solving absolute value inequalities is to first recognize that it's a hard problem and that it'd be easier if instead of being an inequality, it was an equality. Change it to an equality. Feels like you're cheating a little bit there. You kind of are. This won't be your answer, but we'll answer this question and then use those answers to figure out the answer to the original question. So the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals x plus 13. This would be an easy equation to solve if there weren't the absolute value symbols. Unfortunately, there are. The good news is at least they're isolated. The absolute value symbols are by themselves. If they weren't, you'd first isolate them. But since they're all isolated already, all we got to do is kind of consider two cases. I don't know what x is, which means I don't know what 2 times x plus 5 is. It might be a positive number. It might be a negative. I don't know. If 2x plus 5 is a positive number, then the absolute value symbols aren't doing anything at all. So if 2x plus 5 is positive, I don't even need to write the absolute value symbols because they're not doing anything. The absolute value of a positive number is just that number. So in the case that 2x plus 5 is positive, I get here. What about the case that 2x plus 5 is negative? Well, if 2x plus 5 is negative, then what the absolute value symbols do is it changes the sign of 2x plus 5. Maybe 2x plus 5 is negative 7. Then what the absolute value symbols do is they say, okay, it makes it positive 7. So negative, negative 7. What this negative here does is it takes this thing, which we're assuming to be negative, and it makes it positive. Supposed to be an equal sign there. And now I have two equations. I can solve them both. Um, over here, probably easiest to first subtract x from both sides of the equation. That gets us x plus 5 equals 13. Then subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, get x equals 8. Um, over here on this side, it's, it would be nice to combine like terms to add subtract x's to both sides of the equation, but it's hard to do with the parentheses. So we'll first get rid of the parentheses by distributing that negative. Then get all the x's together on one side of the equation. I like to keep the coefficient on the x positive, just personal preference. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides to give me 3x plus 13. You also could have subtracted x from both sides, but I think it's easier to add 2x to both sides. Then subtract 13. Negative 5 minus 13 is negative 18. We're already over at negative 5 on the number line, and you go 13 more spots to the left, you get to negative 18. So if 3x is negative 18, then x is negative 6. Divide both sides by 3 is what I'm saying. So those are your answers? No, those are the answers to this equality. But we can use those to figure out the answers to the inequality. And so the way we'll do that is we'll kind of throw those numbers down here on the number line. And note that they kind of divide our number line up into three different regions. And the nice thing about these regions is if one number in this region is a solution to this inequality, then all the numbers in that region are a solution. So all I got to do is test any number I want from each of the three regions. So to test region 1, let's choose any number in region 1. I don't know. Um, x is maybe negative 10. Nice round number, easy to multiply by. And the question is, is 2 times negative 10 plus 5 absolute value less than negative 10 plus 13. Well, 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. Plus 5 would be negative 15. Negative 10 plus 3 is 3. And so the absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15. And 15 is not... No, sure. It's not less than 3. Right? This is a false statement. 15 is greater than 3. So what that means is negative 10 is not a solution to this inequality. And if negative 10 is not a solution to this inequality, then no numbers in this region are solutions. What about region 2? Pick any number in region 2, any number between negative 6 and positive 8. I like 0. Question is, is 2 times 0 plus 5 absolute value less than 0 plus 13? Well, 2 times 0 is just 0. 0 plus 5 is just 5. The absolute value of 5 is just 5. And 5, sure enough, is less than 13. That's true. 
That means zero is a solution, and therefore four, all numbers in that region are solutions. What about region three? Region three is all the number are all the numbers greater than eight. Um, Ten is a number that's greater than eight. Eight, maybe I'll arbitrarily choose that one. Now I got to figure out is the absolute value of two times ten plus five less than ten plus thirteen? Hmm, it's gonna be close. Let's see, two times ten is twenty. Twenty plus five is twenty-five, and the absolute value of twenty-five is twenty-five. Twenty-five less than twenty-three? No, that doesn't look right. Close, but not quite. No. Um, so that's not true. 10 is not a solution. So none of these numbers are solutions. So the only solutions are the numbers between negative 6 and positive 8. Do you want to include those endpoints, negative 6 and 8? No, because this says less than, not less than or equals to. So solution is all the numbers from, what did I say, negative 6 up to positive 8? But not including those two endpoints. There you go. That's how you solve an absolute value inequality.